Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I had a quick look in the, um, in the library and noticed all the cakes had gone, so well done. And quite a few of you got up to the resources, so thank you for that. Um, they're all smiling now up in the Jupiter room, so that's fantastic. So a big, big thank you to Nigel for that introduction in terms of the Church of England's uh, vision for education. Um, it, it's, it's great to be part of a new diocese, and being part of a new diocese means that we have a, a very new board of education, um, and it's been a real privilege over the last um, nine months or so to be working with Bishop Jonathan, who's taken on the chairmanship of the board. Um, only a few weeks ago, we had a board away day and spent most of the time talking about vision. In fact, it was an interesting week for me because I started the Monday doing that, uh, went off down to Great Missenden and spent 24 hours with about 30 other DDE colleagues looking at the Church of England's vision document. And then at the end of the week, went down to London with Jane and Fiona, my deputies, uh, where there are a number of our schools, Abbey uh, Grange were presenting, Jane was presenting at the Foundation for Educational Leadership's inaugural conference, which was all about vision. So by the Sunday, I felt like I'd done vision. Um, so the fact that we're still doing it, uh, uh, I think is really important, to be quite honest. What Nigel talked about was this national vision, um, but as a new diocese, we need to have our diocesan vision for education, and we've been looking at that, and how, as an emerging diocese with an emerging vision for the diocese, not just for education, but for the diocese in terms of loving, living, learning, and you've all got your badges and you should all now be wearing them, um, how does that vision mesh with the national vision, and what do we want to say that's distinctive, and I do use that word advisedly, is, that is distinctive about our diocese and our vision for education and how can that be something that will nurture, support and sustain you. So it's great to have Bishop Jonathan with us this morning who is going to uh, take us a little bit deeper into where the diocesan vision is going and, and what that means for us and, and for you in partnership. So, Jonathan, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Richard, thank you very much. It's lovely to be here uh, with you for this uh, conference. Very exciting for me. Uh, um, that, that is me in the picture there. Those of you connected to Ripon Cathedral, like Richard, might just recognize where that picture was taken because it's me behind the bar at the beer festival. Uh, which is why I'm looking happy pulling a pint. Uh, but I'm also very happy to be here uh, today and to be sharing in my first uh, Head Teachers Conference as Chair of the Diocesan Board of Education. The first thing I want to say is a huge thank you to all of you, an enormous thank you to all of you uh, for the leadership that you exercise within our schools and within our wider communities and for the way in which all of you go above and beyond the call of duty. I, I, I know what a... Uh, what an incredible cost it can be uh, to, be lead, to be leading schools, especially in this huge time of uh, transition and, and change. I was saying to um, my neighbours on the table there, uh, when I was um, in my last parish where I was chair of governors for 16 years in our voluntary aided uh, primary school, the numbers of the times I would see our uh, relatively uh, young and new head teacher's car parked outside the school at 3, 4 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, and I'm thinking... Why aren't you home with your family? Well, of course, it's because of the cost of leadership within our church school. So a huge thank you to all of you for all that you do uh, and to say what a thrill and a privilege it is uh, to be sharing in this day with you. My own background is that I come from a family of teachers. My mother and uh, two of her sisters were teachers. Both my father's brothers were teachers. Now uh, my daughter 
is a, a teacher in a secondary school. Uh, so I come very much from a family of teachers, that family in, in particular uh, originally coming from South Wales where education was so much part of the, the importance of the culture in those communities uh, and such a driver uh, seeking the best for children and young people in those communities. So that's the background I come from. As I mentioned, uh, 16 years on the Wirral uh, over in Cheshire, that's my home neck of the woods, the diocese in which I grew up in which I've uh, served most of my ministry uh, as the chair of governors at a voluntary aided primary school. Uh, and I come as someone who is utterly committed to the importance of education and to the role of the Church of England in education. I want to do this morning is to build very much on what Nigel has said already about the Church of England's national vision for education. Uh, I'll mention that again later. And my aim, if you like, is to make uh, some connections at different levels and in different ways between the DBE uh, and church schools, uh, between the DBE and the diocese and the parishes, between parishes and schools, between the diocese and the Church of England nationally. Now, what you should have in front of you, if you'd like to uh, turn to this, you should have um, a copy of my PowerPoint slides. Uh, and there's the opportunity, if you want to, to make some notes next to uh, those slides. You should have a copy of our draft diocesan vision for education. We'll be looking at that in more detail. And for later on, there should be a sheet with some group discussion questions. But what you need for now, if you want to have it in front of you, is the uh, uh, pile of uh, four or five sheets stapled together with the PowerPoint slides on them. So as we all know, and as Nigel has reminded us, this is a huge time of change in the world of education. We need to work smarter. We need to work in more joined up ways in order to meet the challenges that we are all facing, especially in a time of great financial stringency. It's been on again on the news uh, this morning how many schools are having to think about the curriculum that they offer or even the number of hours they're offering in the school week just to balance the books. It is a very challenging time. We are today talking about vision because I believe, uh, as we've heard already, that vision matters. It gives us a sense of purpose and direction and it helps us to focus and make the best use of the resources that are available to us. And it also requires us to think about why we are here and what we are hoping to achieve. Vision matters. So, a diocesan vision for education. We are all here because one way or another, we are part of this entity uh, called the Diocese of Leeds. We're just getting used to that. And I'm, I'm aware too, of course, that there are one or two colleagues here who are from community schools. And it's fantastic to welcome you here and to recognize that we work together in partnership. So thank you for being here. Uh, this Diocese of Leeds, the Church of England in West Yorkshire, quite a bit of North Yorkshire, and not forgetting a little bit of Barnsley. Barnsley are here, yes. Don't forget Barnsley. If you do, it's at your peril. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it is an extraordinary entity, this diocese of ours. We're still getting used to it. Ripon and Leeds, Bradford, Wakefield, uh, but we are part of that bigger family new. Uh, and that means we're part of something new, something different, and this is a good opportunity, therefore, to reflect on who we are and what we are about. Uh, the Dyson Board of Education, as uh, Richard has hinted, has itself a number of new members. We've spent some time recently thinking about and formulating our vision. You have a draft version of that in front of you. And one thing we want to do uh, is to, today is to hear what you think uh, about that vision and to take your views into account, because this is very much a, a dynamic and uh, a multifaceted process. So, firstly, um, two key points right at the start. Um, we, and who is that we? It's always worth asking, who's the we? Well, the we in this case is firstly the Diocesan Board of Education. We believe that education should be central to the diocese's vision for its mission 
and ministry. Let me say that again. The Board of Education believes that education should be central to the diocese's vision for its mission and ministry. That is our starting point. But why do we think that? It's not, after all, obvious to everyone. Some people think the diocese, that is the Church of England in this bit of Yorkshire, should focus entirely on growing its churches and bringing people to faith in Jesus Christ. It was wonderful to see those young people up the front here this morning celebrating their faith and having the confidence to lead us in our worship. That's a, a fantastic uh, testament to the work of the church and the school uh, over there in Idle. But some people think that anything other than growing the church and bringing people to faith in Jesus Christ is frankly a distraction from the primary goals of the church, which are to worship God and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. So why, why are we spending so much time and energy and effort thinking about our engagement with the world of education? Well, Nigel, of course, has already spoken about this. It is our Christian conviction that God wants all human beings to experience the abundant life, the life in all its fullness, of which Jesus speaks in John chapter 10, verse 10. And as Christians, we should be committed to the welfare and well-being of all our fellow human beings. And indeed, of the whole of creation. I was yesterday at a fantastic conference uh, at the University of Huddersfield, uh, which was convened by one of our local parishes, but working together with the university, getting a grant from the Temple to Templeton Foundation uh, to think about uh, our response to climate change, reminding us that our, our commitment is to the common good, not only of our fellow be human beings, but even bigger than that, to the well-being of the planet on which we live. This is all about our serving the common good, as Nigel reminded us this morning. That is not the totality of the church's mission, of course. We are also in the business of proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and of inviting people into relationship with God through him. And we do that unashamedly. But as followers of Jesus Christ, we are also in the business of serving other people and helping them to experience life in all its fullness. Or to put it in a different way, life as God intends it to be. To put it in another way then, we are not just here to grow the church. We are also here to help people become all that God made them to be, spiritually, morally, socially, culturally, intellectually, and, yes, economically. So, education should be central to the diocese's vision for its mission and ministry. But it isn't, of course, or at least not always. And that is part of the issue we want to address at this conference. Now, some of you may say, although I suspect because this group is slightly self-selecting, this may not be many in the room, some of you may say, so what? Why does it matter? We can go on being the schools we are. We can go on doing what we are doing, whether or not the diocese takes us to its heart and supports us in what we are doing. Well, we can carry on, thank you very much. And up to a point, that's true. But two things come to mind. Firstly, it's a changing world out there. Local authorities under pressure, Ofsted getting tougher, schools going into category. We need each other, most of all, when things get tough. And we've been reminded of that already. And secondly, having a Christian vision for education changes what we do and brings something distinctive that no one else quite brings in the same way. It's part of what we offer to the world, and it's potentially deeply attractive, as well as very necessary in a world that is obsessed with the material and the economic. 
and being part of something bigger. The Diocese and the Church of England helps us sustain and develop that vision at the local level. That's exactly uh, the kind of issue that your question focused on earlier on, and we're going to explore how we do that. So, how does our work in education fit in with our diocesan vision, loving, living, and learning? And Richard, you weren't wearing your badge either. You've got them. Take them away with you. We've got hundreds. Please do take them and use them. Spread them around. Loving, living, and learning. Um, how many of you have seen, in one form or another, uh, the diocesan the new diocesan vision. How many of you are familiar with uh, this little strap line, loving, living, and learning? How many of you had seen that before today? Thank you, Jane. Glad to hear it. Okay, so that's a few of you, but not many. So it's certainly worth talking about. Um, let me ask a different question. How many of you who have seen the strap line before feel they know what it means? Ooh, I'm not... Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you, Tony. One member of the Diocesan Board of Education who spent a day working on it. Thank you very much. Well, that certainly suggests that it's worth pausing and thinking about. Now, in one sense, it's fairly basic. It's pretty fluffy, really, isn't it? Loving, living, and learning. Might have been made up by a marketing firm. Well, it was made up by a marketing firm. But on the other hand, it is a useful start especially, I would suggest, for us, because it fits very well with what we are about in the world of education. Loving, living, and ooh, learning, uh, which, as Richard said, fits rather better than the thing that Bishop Nick started off by saying about being confident clergy, growing confident Christians to proclaim the gospel. And I've lost it before we've even started. But it didn't fit either with education. And actually, this set of words really does fit quite well with the business of education. So... We aim to, I've got the little poster here, if you haven't seen it already, you, you could print this off and put it up, laminate, dare I say laminated, and put it in your schools. Loving, living, and learning. Uh, this is the uh, version that's available on the Diocesan website. We aim to love God, the world, and one another. Live in the world as it is. But drawn by a vision of something better, we want to help individuals and communities flourish, learn. When we get things wrong by listening and growing, uh, listening and then growing together. Um, don't worry, I'll be coming on uh, to say a bit more about that later on. And Bishop Nick, uh, if you look on the Diocesan website, you'll find that he expands on that a little bit more. Loving, because our experience of God lo God's love compels us to love God, the world, and our neighbor. Showing compassion to all and building outward-looking communities. Living because we celebrate the abundance of life and promote human flourishing, engaging with the world and working for its transformation, challenging injustice, respecting and protecting the environment for this and future generations, learning, because we're confident in God and the good news of Jesus Christ, but we're always listening to God, the world, and each other, and we're always learning, alert to Jesus Christ's challenge to live different. I think that is a wonderful and inspiring vision. Uh, it also, I believe, ties in really closely with what we've been hearing already from Nigel about the Church of England's uh, broader vision for education. And let's go on and explore a little bit more about uh, how the two fit together. So linking with the Church of England's vision for education. Well, I hope you are by now, at least um, on the cover, uh, familiar with this document. It's well worth taking the time to go away and read it and use it uh, as a resource. Nigel has been speaking about that today. Deeply Christian, and a quote from page three, with the promise by Jesus of life in all its fullness at its heart. And a vision of human flourishing. Secondly, serving the common good for the whole human community and its environment. And this vision, as Nigel told us, is worked out through four basic 
elements. Wisdom, hope, community, and identity. Now, I hope we'll see as we explore the diocesan vision for education uh, that we have produced how we seek to pull these different strands uh, together. Loving, living, and learning and the themes of the, diocese, of, of the Church of England's vision for education, deeply Christian, and serving the common good. I'm not going to spend longer on that now because that's precisely what we've had an hour on earlier on. So if you'd like now uh, to look at the handout you received with the statement of the draft vision for the Diocese of Leeds Board of Education, it's this one. And we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> so the section at the top deals essentially with the themes that we've covered already in the first part of my talk and in Nigel's presentation earlier on. But I'd like to note especially the reference to nurturing Christian hope as well as high expectations. We are not just about academic achievement, though that is vital as part of what we do as well. No, we are about helping people to catch a sense of what God has done and is doing through Jesus and of the abundant life that he offers to us through him. And then there's the phrase at the bottom of that first section, called by God. You see, it's not just clergy or even teachers who have a calling, a vocation from God. It is actually every baptized person who is a follower of Jesus Christ. But this, outlined on this document here, this is our calling as those who work in the field of education. Called by God, we aim to nurture Christian hope and high expectations in everyone who is involved in education across our diocese. Now, that's really important. We'll come back to that as well. We are here mainly today gathered as those involved in church schools. But this is a vision that we bring to all those involved in education. And by that, I mean from naught right through to lifelong learning. So, what are our ambitions as we seek to work out this vision? There we go. Firstly, to inspire children, young people, and adults with Jesus' promise of life in all its fullness. John 10, 10. To inspire people with Jesus' promise of life in all its fullness. Now, this is really important. It's absolutely foundational to the national vision and to ours. It is the foundation of what we are about and what makes us distinctive. We have discovered something unique, something special in Jesus Christ, and we want to share it with others. Not preaching, certainly not proselytizing, but excited and captivated by what we have found in Jesus Christ and the difference he has made to our lives. This isn't about religion. It's about experiencing life as God meant it to be developing our gifts, fulfilling our potential, and discovering a real sense of purpose in life. That can and should be really inspiring for us, and people should sense it and feel it when they come into our schools. This is something I saw in a, in a, <coughs> excuse me, at an academy in Gateshead last week. That school was not a Christian foundation, but uh, the head was clearly someone for whom uh, faith was important and who communicated in every pore of her body, every word she spoke, she communicated hope to her children and her colleagues 
um, the word was indeed inspirational. It was a privilege and a pleasure to be sharing uh, in that school uh, for the morning I spent there as part of uh, Archbishop Sentamu's bishop's mission uh, up in the Durham Diocese. Something about communicating uh, hope and aspiration to inspire people with Jesus' promise of life in all its fullness. And then secondly, the second bullet point, to support those who work in schools, colleges, and universities in nurturing the whole human person through encouraging spiritual, intellectual, emotional, physical, moral, and social development. Probably throw in a few more adjectives there as well. To nurture the whole human person. It is vital that the education we offer should be holistic, not narrowly focused on passing exams, getting grades, or preparing people for the world of work, though it should also, no doubt, do those things as well. And that approach that I am advocating, that we are advocating, can be quite countercultural at the moment, as we know. It goes against the grain of much of what is coming out of the DFE, and we need to stand up for that. We are about encouraging spiritual, intellectual, emotional, physical, moral, and social development, and any other kind you can think of, too. We believe that Church of England schools and other institutions have the duty and the opportunity to speak up for a different vision for education, one that is about the whole person. That is something special. That is our charism. That is our gift. That is something we bring and need to bring to thinking about education in this country, not least at this time, to nurture the whole human person. And then thirdly, following on from that, and um, our ambition to offer a deeply Christian vision of human flourishing for all in which schools and other institutions serve the common good, setting high expectations of achievement within a holistic and whole life framework. One of the things I think we need to do is to strengthen links between the schools and parishes and the diocese so that there is a better understanding of and support for what schools are doing on the one hand, and so that there is a clearer theological underpinning and rationale for schools as part of the church's mission on the other. Now, I think the national report of which uh, Nigel has spoken this morning begins to do that, but I think there is much more to be done at both the national and the local level level. Do challenge your local clergy and indeed your local bishops to think about how they engage with and support all those who are involved in education, not just those involved in church schools. This is part of our contribution to a wider debate about where we are going as a society and what we hope for and expect from our children and young people, a deeply Christian vision of human flourishing for all. That's got to be a partnership, not only with uh, involving those of you in schools, but I do think that local churches have a role to play also in working together with you and supporting that, and at different levels in the diocese and nationally, we, that is a contribution we need to bring loud and clear to the discussion about the future of education at the moment, a deeply Christian vision. So these are our ambitions. What about our priorities? Then we come on to the question of how these things actually work out. What are our priorities? What values will we pursue in the daily life of our schools and other institutions? And the first one, loving to respect and encourage each individual as a personal person wonderfully created in the image of God. 
and deeply loved by God. Now, I think this is a wonderfully rich and inspiring aspiration. It has huge implications for how we treat people and how we help them to feel about themselves. <clears throat> there is, this, is, I think, speaks of a really positive contribution when all too often, as we know, uh, the church is seen as negative and censorious. This is something deeply positive. In the academy, uh, I, the academy I visited the other day, or the one I've mentioned already, a, a few years ago it had a really poor reputation. And it was great to hear how the students spoke when I asked what was best about the school. And this was, by the way, away from the ears of the teachers. This was round tables like this and just moving around and chatting with the students. The first thing they said was, the teachers. And what is it about them? They make everyone feel equal and feel special. Isn't that fantastic? To respect and encourage each individual as a person wonderfully created in the image of God and deeply loved by God. And living. To offer an example of living the gospel in each learning community inspired by God's love for us and our love for one another. Now, as we've heard already, words and aspirations are not enough. This needs to be borne out in the way people relate to one another, in the atmosphere and ethos of the school, in the way children treat one another, both in class and in the playground. A school is a community, day in, day out, week in, week out. Are our schools becoming places where people see and experience the gospel being lived out? And is that one of our key priorities? Are our schools places where people see that abundant life in terms of the relationships between everyone in those communities? Loving and living. And then finally, of course, learning. To, to serve our whole community by offering the highest quality learning experience to students of all ages, promoting wisdom, knowledge, and skills. Let's be quite clear, this is about excellence. It is about never resting on our laurels, and it is about keeping track of FFT data and rays online and all the rest but it's also about so much more than that. It's about education for wisdom, which I think of partly as to do with the soft skills that young people need to thrive in life. Um, my son, Edward, our second child, graduated from university, doing really well in his career. It's not really because he's brighter than anybody else. He's done well. So much more of it is to do with the soft skills he's brought and the relationships he has and the way that's been nurtured in him. Wisdom for life. It is also, on the other hand, about knowledge. It is about stretching students to learn and to want to learn more. And it's also about skills. Practical life skills that will indeed be useful to them when they do come into the world of employment. It's not that we're pushing that out of the equation, but we're saying it needs to be part of the bigger picture. Now, please understand, can I underline this? Please understand that none of this that I've been talking about today is intended to be prescriptive in a narrow sense. We are not talking about them at the diocese telling you what to do because we know perfectly well that doesn't work, not least of all in Yorkshire. But we are talking about trying to shape a culture, one that builds on the best that is happening already in our schools and colleges, and one that helps set a tone and a direction for our future development. 
And of course, this has to be a partnership. A partnership with a whole range of people involved at all sorts of levels. And we need to strengthen all those partnerships. The last part of the document there just begins to tease out uh, who and where and what some of those partnerships might be. Students, staff, parents, governors, parishes, synods, regional bodies, schools commissioners, national bodies like the DfE and the National Society. These are all our partners. And part of our purpose today is to involve you in that process of partnership and to invite you to get more involved. So in a moment, we're going to go into groups and discuss this whole theme of vision uh, and how it works out perhaps in our schools. Uh, and again, this, I'll say the same uh, as uh, Nigel said before. You've got some suggestions for discussion, but if your discussion goes off in a different direction, uh, that's fine. Uh, so you, you will need in a moment to turn to that handout with that list of questions on. Uh, but before we do that, I'd just like to give the chance for some initial response to what I've said. So please, would you just take a couple of minutes to talk on your tables and then come back with some brief comments or some issues you'd like to raise in response to the two questions which you'll see now uh, on the screen, because our partners, most importantly today, begins with and includes you. Can you see those questions? How do you respond to what you've heard? Uh, and that's principally to what I've been talking about, but it may well feed on some of the things that came out of our first session. And what part do you think you can play in shaping and implementing the vision? That's just an initial response to that question, because much of what you do in the groups uh, we'll be talking about that question of the development and implementation uh, of vision. So thank you very much indeed for your attention. And now over to you. Thank you. A couple of minutes in buzz and then we'll come back uh, with comments and questions. Thank you.